Yes, from Mahguru Maharaj. We are able to hear you. What happened? You cut your picture off? Ye yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. I thought I will, I will start recording. Oh, you want to record? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I can record later. I should wait. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway yeah, Pankajan, Pankajangari Prabhu, he joined Hare Krishna movement in 1973. He joined in London, actually. And Janani Bas, his, tw his twin brother, he joined in 1971 because he was traveling in India and he met the devotees in India and he joined in India. And so he wrote to his brother and told them about it. And so his brother, Pankajangari Prabhu, he went to the temple in London and he joined the temple in London. And then they, he came to India to be with Jananivas. And they were together and they were doing the deity worship. So uh, it happened that after Prabhupada's departure, the, the, the senior devote, the leaders decided they wanted to put Lord Nishingadev there in the temple because our temple had been attacked by Dakoids and they thought it would be good to put Lord Nishingadev there, it would help to protect the devotees and protect the temple. And so they put the deity of Lord Nishingadev there and Pankajangari Prabhu became like the pujari for Lord Nishingadev and he would oversee the puja and he was the one who arranged that they would do different pujas for the benefit of people. You know, someone's sick, someone has poor health, or someone has a crisis in their life. They would offer prayers to Lord Nishringadev, and they would have a puja, and he would, they would chant the 108 names of Lord Nishringadev and offer a tosi leaf, offer tosi leaves on the lotus feet of Lord Nishringadev for each of the names. So this was all introduced by Pankajangari Prabhu. And he also introduced the, uh, the, the um, it was, uh, well, I don't know if he introduced it, but uh, he was involved with the, many of the, the, the worship of Lord Jagannath. You know, that near to Mayapur, there's a, a village called Rajpur. And in Rajpur, they had the temple of Jagannath there. And the deities were donated to ISKCON. This was after Prabhupada had departed. So it was like about 1980 when the temple was donated to ISKCON. Prabhupada departed 1977. So about 1980, it happened that we got this Jagannath temple. And there were many wonderful leelas with the Jagannath deities there. The Jagannath deities there are very powerful. So Pankajangri Prabhu has written a book about it, actually. He's written a very nice book about the Jagannath Leela there, the pastimes of the Jagannath deities. So he was very talented devotee. He, he wrote these books about Jagannath, and he wrote about Lord Nishingadev, and he, uh, he also... Uh, helped a lot in developing the the bhakti uh, the, the the traditional gurukula for the young brahmacharis there he helped a lot to introduce the program there to teach the the young boys the young men there how to do puja and how to chant the different mantras and vedic hymns along with jananivas you know they work together and then they, they have also the deity worship course they have a separate, uh, you know, we have the Shastri course here in Mayapur, the Mayapur Institute, Institute for studying Shastra. But there's also the deity worship department, and they have a special course to train people to worship the deities. And a number of devotees go there to Mayapur, and they will stay for like four months or more to take the full deity worship course and learn how to dress the deities nicely and how to cook for the deities and how to worship the deities and according to the parampara, according to the tradition. And these, th these things were taught by Pankajangari Prabhu along with Chananivas. 
they would regularly be giving classes along with other devotees. But, you know, they were very senior. So Pankajangari Prabhu also liked to take part in dramas. I, I remember I was, uh, when we were on the Parikrama, and we would go to the home of Kalaveka Sridhar, which is usually on the last day of the Parikrama. We'll go to the house of Kolaveka Sridhar and we'll tell about Kolaveka Sridhar and how he was living by selling a few bananas every day. So when we did the pastime, usually would, uh, uh, he would play the part of Lord Chaitanya and I would play the part of Kolaveka Sridhar. <laughs> so I'd be, he would come to the shop and he would want to take the bananas. And it was, it was all very nice. So every year we would do this kind of drama. He would be Lord Chaitanya and I'd be Kulaveka Sridhar. We did it like that for a few years anyway. Mm. <laughs> it was very, very amusing. So I have, I have sweet memories of that, past, of that pastime with him. He was a very happy person. He was never moody or depressed or anything. He was always very pleasant. He left the body, he was uh, 77 years old. They just celebrated their 77th birthday. He doesn't look old, but actually he was 77 years old. Mm. And so not so young, but I'm sure he's gone off to a better place to be with Lord Nishringadev and to serve Lord Nishringadev or Lord Chaitanya there. He spent nearly 50 years here in Mayapur doing service. So he did a lot of austerities just being here. <laughs> he and Janani Vas, they look very similar. For many years, I could not tell which one is Pankajangari and which one is Janani Vas. And I would always get, get it wrong. It's only in this last year because I had been staying here in Mayapur. And so gradually I got to know which one is Pankajangari and which one is Jananivas. And Jananivas told me, he said, when they were children, uh, when they were children, his mother liked them both to be identical and always to be together. But it happened that one time in the school, Pankajangari did very well in the, in the, in the, in the exams and Jananivas didn't do so good. So they wanted to put Pankajangari in the, in the top class and keep Jananivas in one of the lower classes. So when the mother found out, she was just furious and she came to the school and she complained bitterly to the teacher that you can't do this. I brought my sons up to be together and they're the same. You can't separate them like this. <laughs> and so it happened that, you know, they put Pankajangari back in the same class with Janani Bas. <laughs> it's very amusing. Hmm. So this is some pastimes about Pankajangari. Probably, you know, certainly many, many devotees will miss him. He was usually always there in the morning when we greet the deities and people would come for darshan, Lord Nishringadev's altar. And, you know, they have a special hat there, which represents the lotus feet of Lord Nishringadev. The lotus feet of the deity are on the hat. So they place that hat on the heads of all the devotees. So all the devotees line up every morning to have that hat to get the blessings of Lord Nishringadev's lotus feet. So Pankajangari Prabhu, he would be the one to do that, usually in the morning. He would be the one to place the a lotus feet of Lord Nishringadev on everyone's head. So in this way, he was regularly giving blessings to all the devotees. And so everyone's missing him. We all feel very sad about his departure. At the same time, we know that he's gone for a very good destination. He'll be with Krishna somewhere. Hare Krishna. Pankajangari Prabhu Ki Jai. 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 Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Jai. Very, Jai. very sweet pastimes with Panga Jangari Prabhu. We are uh, we missed meeting such a great personality. 
is it like guru maharaj they will go to shrila prabhupad and shrila prabhupad will introduce uh, him to krishna it's like that guru maharaj or uh, if they are not like the ordinary souls right who undergo the transmigration of the soul in 12 days or something like that no no it wouldn't be like that yeah i'll go to go to the spiritual world be with prabhupad prabhupad introduce him to lord chaitanya or krishna Yeah. Okay. Definitely not an ordinary soul who spent so many years absorbed in devotional service. He's a lifetime brahmachari, the same as his brother. I mean, you know, they were brahmacharis, they never married. Very detached. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So now we are in fourth chapter, four point five. I share the screen. Verse four point five. Um, Tanmay Prabhu, do you want to please read this? Sure, Mataji. But can I read the next one, please? Yeah, sure, sure. No problem. Thank you so much. Yeah. Maybe uh, Fernando Prabhu, do you want to read? Yes, Mataji. Sure. Thank you. Shri Bhagwan Uvacha, Bauni Mezya, Titani Janmani Tava Karjuna. Tani aham veda sarvani natvam veta parantapa. Translation. Personality of God had said, Many, many births, both you and I have passed. I can remember all of them, but you cannot, O oh, subduer of the enemy. Purport. In the Brahma Samhita, we have information of many, many incarnations of the Lord. It is stated there. Advaitam Achitam Anadim Ananta Rupam Adyam Purana Purusham Nava Yovanam Cha Videshu Durlabam Adurlabam Atma Bhakto Govindam Adi Purusham Tam Aham Bajami. I worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead Govinda Krishna, who is the original person, absolute and fable without being. Although expanded into although expanded into illuminated forms, unlimited forms, he is still the same original, the oldest, and the person always appearing as a fresh youth. Such eternal, blissful, all-knowing forms of the Lord are usually not understood by even the best Vedic scholars, but they are always manifest to pure, unalloyed devotees. It is also stated in Brahma Samhita, Brahma di Murtishu Kala Niyamena Tishtan Nanavataram Akarod Bhuvanishu Kintu Krishna Swayam Samabhavat Paramha Pumam Yo Govindam Adi Purusham Tam Aham Bajami. I worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead Govinda, who is always situated in various incarnations such as, as Rama, Narsimha, and many sub-incarnations as well. But who is the original personality of Godhead known as Krishna and who incarnates, incarnates personally also? In the Vedas also it is said that the Lord, although one without a second manifests manifests himself in innumerable forms is like the Vaiduria stone, which changes color yet still remains one. All those multi forms are understood by the pure unallowed devotees, but not by a simple study of the Vedas. Vedeshu Durlabam Adurlabam Atma Bhakto devotees like Arjuna are constant companions of the Lord. 
And whenever the Lord incarnates, the associated devotees are also incarnate in order to serve the Lord in different capacities. Arjuna is, this, is one of these devotees. And in this verse, it is understood that some millions of years ago, when Lord Krishna spoke to the Bhagavad, the Bhagavad Gita, to the sun god Vivashvan, Arjuna, in a different capacity, was also present. But the difference between the Lord and Arjuna is that the Lord remembered the incident whereas Arjuna could not remember. Could not remember. There is the difference between the part and parcel living entity and the Supreme Lord. Although Arjuna is addressed Arian as the mighty hero who could subdue the enemies, he is unable to recall what had happened in his various past births. Therefore, a living entity, however great he may be in the material estimation, can never equal the Supreme Lord. Anyone who is a constant companion of the Lord is certainly a liberated person, but he cannot be equal to the Lord. The Lord is described in the Dhamma Samhita as infallible, achyuta, which means that he never forgets himself, even though he is in material contact. Therefore, the Lord and the living entity can never be equal in all respects. Even if the living entity is liberated as Arjuna, although Arjuna is a devotee of the Lord, he sometimes forgets the nature of the Lord. But by the divine grace, a devotee can at once understand the infallible condition of the Lord. Whereas a non devotee or a demon cannot understand this transcendental nature. Conse consequently, these descriptions in the Gita cannot be understood by demoniac brains. Krishna, remember, acts which were performed by him millions of years before, but Arjuna could not, despite the fact that both Krishna and Arjuna are eternal in nature. We may also not hear in that a living entity forgets everything due to his change of body. But the Lord remembers because he does not change his Satchityananda body. His Advaita, which means there is no distinction between his body and himself. Everything in relation to him is spirit, whereas the conditioned soul is different from his material body. And because the Lord's body and self are identical, his position is always different from that of the ordinary living entity. Even when he descends to the material platform, the demons cannot adjust themselves to the transcendent, transcendental nature of the Lord, which the Lord himself explains in the following verse. All right, so this is... Krishna's reply to Arjuna's question about how is it, you know, Krishna could instruct the sun god Vivishwan because he thought the sun god Vivishwan must be senior to Arjuna. But Arjuna was asking this question just to, uh, not for his benefit, but for the benefit of people who don't understand Krishna's nature. You see, there are many people, they think of Krishna and they don't think of him as the personality of Godhead. They don't think of him as the original Bhagavan, but they think, oh, he's just a cowherd boy. He's just from that village in India there. They think of him in a mundane way, in a material way. They do not understand his position. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada began the purport quoting verses from Lord Brahma that even Lord Brahma worships Lord Krishna. Someone said to me yesterday, I think it was, they said, uh, people, people asked, uh, the people were asking, why you worship a cowherd boy? Just from, he's just a, a boy from a village. Why don't you worship Shiva or Brahma? But I explained to her, well, Shiva and Brahma, they also worship Krishna. So Krishna is the original Supreme, but he takes many different bodies. He appears at different times. 
right? As described in the next verse in the Bhagavad Gita, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. He appears in every millennium. He comes regularly. And so people don't understand his transcendental nature. They think of Krishna to be just like us. We are mortals, we are human beings, but Krishna is a divine supreme personality of Godhead. And Prabhupada talks about the difference between us and Krishna. Krishna remembers everything, we don't. We don't remember our past births, but definitely we have had many births in the past. You don't remember, we're only thinking of this life. But we've had many births. And according to our acts in this life, we'll take another birth in the future. So we don't remember, but Krishna remembers. He remembers all of his different pastimes, how he comes in different forms. He comes as Lord Ramachandra. He comes as Lord Nishringa. He comes as a Varaha, as Matsya, as Kurma. Many different avatars are there. They're all coming from the original personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, who is also known as Govinda. And that's the person who Lord Brahma worships when he says, Govindam Adipursam Tamaham Bajamin. I worship the Supreme Govinda, the original Purusha, the original enjoyer. So when pe people ask about Lord Krishna, they have to understand who they are. You see, if you don't understand who you are, you never understand who is Krishna. If we're thinking I'm the body, we don't, if we don't understand I'm a soul, then we'll never be able to understand Krishna. So that's why in the second chapter, Krishna explained about the body and the soul, that within the body of a living entity is the soul. And we are all souls. And we have to understand that very clearly, that we're not the body, we are souls, and we have taken birth many times. Then we will be a little more qualified to understand the nature of Lord Krishna, who comes many times. And he comes, we will hear in the next two verses, we will hear why he comes and when he comes, what he does. Okay, any questions? Yes, Prabhu, I have a question, Tanmoy. Yes. Prabhu, um, Arjun, Krishna and Arjun is known as the um, incarnation of Nara and Narayan. And uh -huh. uh, in that case, why one of the Nara and Narayan, why Narayan remember, like Krishna remembers, that is, I understand. But why would Arjun forget about the past, some of the activities from his past life? Well... Remember, Arjuna is playing the part of a conditioned soul so that Krishna, Lord Krishna can speak the Bhagavad Gita. Lord, Lord Arjuna is not really in any illusion, but he's be, he, for the purpose of allowing Krishna to speak this Bhagavad Gita, he's being placed into illusion. Okay. So it's like that. You have to understand Arjuna is... a a very great de devotee, a great personality, is very dear to Lord Krishna. So he knows, he, he can understand. But for the sake of others, Arjuna is asking these questions. He wants all of us to understand very clearly. He knows, but we don't. And certainly we don't remember our past births. Arjuna may remember, but we don't. That's the problem. Generally, Krishna, he's the Supreme Lord. He's God. He remembers. But we are jivas. We are tiny sparks of the Supreme. We don't remember. All our memories taken away. The time of birth, we identify with the body and we think, oh, this is my home. This is my mother. This is my father. I belong here. This is it illusion of material life. We identify with the material body 
And we think, I am this body, my country, I live from this country, my country is worshipable. And so many illusions, so much ignorance. Yeah. So Krishna doesn't have that kind of ignorance. He's not an ordinary living entity. We are the marginal potency of Lord Krishna. As the marginal potency, we can be covered by the material energy. And when the material energy covers us, we forget everything. And we think, I am the body. I belong here. We're thinking, this is mine. This is all what we call ahankar, the false ego, ahankar. We're thinking, this is mine, belongs to me. I am the body, this is mine. Aham and mamiti, this is ahankar, false ego. And this false ego keeps us covered, it keeps us in ignorance, and we forget everything. Instead, we're trying to enjoy the body and the senses. Understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj, very clearly. Thank you. Okay. Bhagavad Gita 4.6, Tanmay Prabhu, do you want to read this? Yes, Mataji, I want to read this. Ajo Pishan Aviyayatma Bhutanam Ishvaro Pishan Prakrit, Prakritim Swam Adhisthaya Sambhavami Atma Mayaya Translation Although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates, and although I am the Lord of all living entities, I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. Parport, the Lord has spoken about the peculiarity of his birth. Although he may appear like an ordinary person, he remembers everything of his many, many past births. Whereas a common man cannot remember what he has done even a few hours before. If someone is asked what he did exactly at the same time on one day earlier, it would be very difficult for a common man to answer immediately. He would surely have, a, have to dredge his memory to recall what he was doing exactly at the same time one day before. And yet, men often dare claim to be God or Krishna. One should not be misled by such meaningless claims. Then again, the Lord explains his prakriti or his form. Prakriti means nature as well as Swarupa or one's own form. The Lord says that he appears in his own body. He does not change his body as the common living entity changes from one body to another. The conditioned soul may have one kind of body in the present birth, but he has a different body in the next birth. In the material world, the living entity has no fixed body but transmigrates from one body to another. The Lord, however, does not do so. Whenever he appears, he does so in the same original body by his, by his internal potency. In other words, Krishna appears in this material world in his original eternal form with two hands holding a flute. He appears exactly in his eternal body, uncontaminated by this material world. Although he appears in the same transcendental body and is Lord of the universe, it still appears that he takes his birth like an ordinary living entity. And although his body does not deteriorate like a material body, it still appears that Lord Krishna grows from a childhood to boy, boyhood and from boyhood to youth. But astonishingly enough, he never ages beyond youth. Mataji, can you please scroll up? Thank you. Sorry, Prabhu. At the time of the Battle of Kurukshetra, 
he had many grandchildren at home, or in other words, he had sufficiently aged by material calculations. He still looked just like a young man, 20 or 25 years old. We never see a picture of Krishna in old age because he never grows old like us. Although he is the oldest person in the whole creation, past, present, and future. Neither his body nor his intelligence ever deteriorates or changes. Therefore, it is clear that in, in spite of his being in the material world, he is the same unborn, eternal form of, form of bliss and knowledge, changeless in his transcendental body and intelligence. Factually, his appearance and disappearance are like the sun's rising, moving before us and then disappearing from our eyesight. When the sun is out of sight, we think that the sun has set. And when the sun is before our eyes, we think that the sun is on the horizon. Actually, the sun is always in its fixed position. But owing to our defective insufficient senses, we calculate the appearance and disappearance of the sun in the sky. And because Lord Krishna's appearance and disappearance are completely different from that of any ordinary common living entity, it is evident that he is eternal, blissful knowledge by um, internal potency. And he is never contaminated by material nature. The Vedas also confirm that the, personal, that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is unborn, yet he is he still appears to take birth, take his birth in multi manifestations. The Vedic su supplementary literatures also confirm that even though the Lord appears to be taking his birth, he is still without change of body. In the Bhagavatam, he appears before his mother as Narayan with four hands and decorations of six kinds of full opulences. His appearance in his original eternal form in his causeless mercy bestows upon the living entities so that they can concentrate on the Supreme Lord as he is and not on mental concoctions or imaginations, which the impersonalists wrongly think that things the Lord forms to be. The word Maya or Atma Maya refers to the Lord's causeless mercy According to the Vishakosha Dictionary, the Lord is conscious of all of his previous appearance and disappearances. But a common living entity forgets everything about his past body as soon as he gets another body. He is the Lord of all living entities because he performs wonderful and superhuman activities while he is on this earth. Therefore, the Lord is always the same absolute truth and is without differentiation between his form and self or between his quality and body. A question may now be raised as to why the Lord appears and disappears in this world. This is explained in the next verse. Jai Shila Prabhupada. Thank you, so Lord Krishna is described like this. He's unborn, right? People, that's, this is very difficult for people to understand because everyone knows Krishna has a mother and father and we know that he takes birth in Mathura. But here Krishna is saying, I am unborn, although I'm unborn. So the, before they can understand Krishna's nature, they have, one has to understand their own nature, that we're all spirit souls. And Krishna's body is not material. Krishna's body is spiritual. And the spiritual body doesn't grow old. It doesn't get diseased. It doesn't die. But people will say, oh, come on. We know Krishna took birth. We know Krishna died. He got shot in the foot by an arrow. They don't understand the transcendental nature of Krishna. It's mentioned here, my transcendental body never deteriorates. So Krishna's body is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. Our bodies are not. Our bodies are not eternal, they're temporary. They're not full of bliss, they're miserable. And they're not full of knowledge, they're full of ignorance. Our bodies are just the opposite from Krishna's spiritual body. 
And their but Krishna says, my body never deteriorates. But we know our bodies deteriorate. Our bodies get old, the hair goes gray, it falls out, our eyes get weak, the hearing goes, the digestion goes. So many problems with the material body. But Krishna has his body is not material, transcendental. So Krishna comes. And when does the Lord come? It's described in the scriptures. You have to refer to scriptures to understand when the Lord comes. All of the incarnations of the Lord are mentioned in the scriptures. If somebody's an incarnation of God, it should be mentioned in the, in the scripture. All right, any question? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I have one question. Christians ask uh, Vaishnavas very often in discussions, for example, what is the point in a new birth if we don't remember anything? We don't understand why we are um, punished. And uh, how uh, can we become better in that case? Well, you could say punished, but not necessarily punishment. It's just, it just happens like that, that we don't remember our previous life. In some ways, it's appropriate for us because we can enjoy this life better. If you had to remember what happened in your last life, it would be unbearable. You know, just like if we had to remember all the things which have happened to us in previous lives, how we've been birds and fish and we've been animals and sometimes we were trees. If we had to remember all these things, it's, it's unbearable for us. So Krishna, in order to facilitate our material desires, the memory goes. And we only think about this life because we take birth in this body, we're thinking to enjoy we're thinking, I will enjoy with this body. I will, I will be happy. I'll get a nice body and I will be happy. I will enjoy the material world. So that's the dream. So Krishna, in order to facilitate our dream, he arranges to take away the memory of the past life. Yeah, if we had to understand, you know, oh, in the past life, you know, I was a pig. I was a pig and the farmer came and the butcher came with a big knife. They cut me up. I was screaming, but they didn't care. They cut me up. Right? Like that. Can you understand, Yuna? Uh, yes, yes, I'm understood. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Would you like to remember your past life? Mm, I don't know. Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it was interesting <laughs> why I'm in this situation, uh, not in other situation. <laughs> well, some things we can understand from our karma. We can understand something of our past life. You can understand some things. What was our position? What was our nature? And now we're in this situation. It's like the, the manifestation of the karma we had from the past. You know, it's, it's, it's not difficult for us to understand. If we, under, we know about reincarnation and we can accept it. And so we can think, you know, somebody's, you know, you somebody's very rich or somebody's not so rich or poor. You know, this is, the, you know, the karma from the past. Maybe in the last life we were very rich, so this life we become very poor. And maybe in the last life you had, you know, you had a lot of material sense gratification and you were very disappointed with the material world and you, were, you just wanted to get away from everything. So Krishna puts you in that situation where you're in that place and far eastern and north Russia and you know there's not a lot of people there and the weather is not very pleasant and 
So you cannot really enjoy there, but maybe that's what you wanted. You wanted to get away from all of these things because, you know, where there's too much sense gratification, it's not good for us. And too much sense gratification is the cause of distress. So sometimes Krishna arranges, he takes us away from all the comfortable living and lifestyle. He puts us into some aust an austere condition, difficult condition, because in the last life we had too much opulence and it was not good for us. So Krishna takes it away and he puts us into a more austere condition where it becomes easier for us to become serious about spiritual life and to contemplate about getting free of birth and death. But if you're in very opulent circumstances and you're enjoying a lot of luxury and a lot of pleasures, then you don't want to leave it. <laughs> it's very hard to get away from it, to give it up. But Krishna's put you into that situation. We should think that Krishna, this is Krishna's mercy on me that Krishna has put me into this situation just to make it easier for me to become Krishna conscious. Right? We should think like that, that this is Krishna's kindness on me, that he's taken me away from all the, the material, material luxuries, material pleasures of life, and he's put me into this, you know, more quiet, more silent environment away from everyone and only a few people and hmm. so krishna puts us into these situations just to help us so that we can progress in krishna consciousness and i think you can you know i think it's very good you know that in some ways it's very good you know you, you see people who Sometimes people, they, they want to go to places where there's a lot of luxury living. And they want to go to places like Los Angeles and, or to Hawaii. And they think, I will enjoy there. But actually, they're just, they just become miserable when they go there. They just become miserable. They don't really enjoy. Because real enjoyment is not through the body. Real enjoyment is through the soul. We have to take pleasure from within by chanting the holy name and by worshipping Krishna and hearing about Krishna. Right? Yes, is it right? Why I would uh, like to remember my past, my past life, for example, I wouldn't like to repeat my mistakes once more, once more, once more. You wouldn't like to make your, the same mistakes. Well, you don't know really what mistakes you made in the last life. But, well, one thing is now you're a woman. So maybe last life you were a man. Right? You were a man, but you were very attached to a woman. Maybe, yes. Right? Uh -huh. So at the time of death, you were thinking about this, a woman, some woman. So you take birth, you become a woman. You have a woman's body. Hmm? Krishna puts you into the woman's body because at the time of death, you were thinking of a woman. So although you had the man's body in your last life, now you have the woman's body. So that was maybe your mistake, you see? that you, you got attached. Oh, we become, yes. It happens to everybody. We become attached to the opposite sex. Oh, then the next life, you have to take birth again. Take birth again. It's a problem. So now Krishna put you into the body of a woman, but Krishna said women can also achieve perfection. You just have to be very careful. You don't make the same mistake again. All right? Become yes. attached. Yes. You be, just become attached to Krishna. Nobody else. 
You don't need anybody else. The only Krishna. You could say he's the perfect man. Of course, he's not an ordinary man like us, but he's certainly masculine in nature. So he is the dear, most lovable object, and he's your best friend. And you have to remember that. All right? Are you happy knowing now in your last life you were a man? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> okay. maybe, maybe woman is better. So you think about it? Mm, yes. Woman is better, I think. A woman is uh, not proud. A woman is, uh, can surrender to Krishna without problem. Okay, good. So Krishna has put you into the right situation to make it easier for you to become Krishna conscious. Yes. The woman's exactly body. So. Yes. But remember, you're not a woman, you're a soul. You're just in the woman's body. Yes, okay, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we want to do another verse, Vaishnavi? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, I just have one uh, doubt. He says, I still appear in every millennium. I saw the meaning of millennium is every thousand years or what do we, what do they mean, Guru Maharaj? Millennium means yuga or? Yeah, in every millennium. Millennium means, well, it usually it means the, uh, what is the Sanskrit word? Uh, um, millennium. How did they translate? What was the word millennium? Where did it come from? That's what we are also seeing. Sambhavami, Atma Mayaya, I do organize. Okay, I'm just, I am also searching, Guru Maharaj. Where is it in the synonym? Anyway, it usually I think of it as meaning the cycle of the four ages together. A millennium in my original term. Generally, of course, we do think of a millennium a thousand years, but it's much more than that. In every age, it could be every yuga. The Lord usually, we have yuga avatars. But you see, Krishna is not speaking about his avatars. He's saying, I appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. So he's talking about Krishna himself. When, when does Krishna come? So Krishna doesn't come in every yuga, but he does come in every millennium. <laughs> calling it a kalpa, Maharaj. Uh, kal well, kalpa means what? The four ages together, right? Four yeah. ages together, that is one cycle. And after the Brahma's life, day and night becomes the kalpa, right? The trillions of a trillions of years. One thousand ages taken together is the duration of trillions. one day of Brahma, right? Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Maharyam Brahmano Vidu. A thousand ages taken together. In the, in the day of Brahma, there are 1,000 cycles of the four Yugas. Yeah. So Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna, they will appear in their original transcendental form only once in the one day of Brahma. Yeah, right. Lord Chaitanya comes 
one time in the one day of Brahma. Lord Krishna also comes as it, you know, there's there's different Krishnas. We have the Shamsundar Krishna, who is the original form, but you also have Vasudev Krishna. Now Vasudev Krishna, he will come in every in every Dwapara Yuga. In the Dwapara Yuga, Lord Krishna is the incarnation. Just as Lord Rama comes in the Treta Yuga. Well, Lord Rama, he's actually a Lila avatar. He's not a Yuga avatar. But Lord Chaitanya, he's a Yuga avatar. So Lord Chaitanya, the, 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 the form of Lord Chaitanya, who's not different from Krishna, will appear one time in the one day of Brahma, in the 1,000 ages taken together. So 1,000 cycles of the four ages, Satya, Trikta, Dwapara, and Kali, the Lord will come one time in the 1,000 cycles of the four ages. Every millennium. Yeah, yeah, now it's more clear, Guru Maharaj. Millennium means you are telling it's uh, like thousand cycles of the four yugas, like uh, that. Right, yeah. Guru Maharaj? Yes. Is that, what does it say? What's the word? Millennium and the Sambhavami, you gay, you gay. And every yuga, eh? Sambhavami, you gay, you gay. It's ah. in every age. So the Lord comes, but he comes in different forms. O Sambhavami Atma Mayaya. Here in this verse is Sambhavami Atma Mayaya. So that's different by my internal energy. Sambhavani, I incarnate by my internal energy. I still appear in my original transcendental form. But it says in every millennium. But it doesn't say that in the Sanskrit. So it's it's not from this verse. It's in other verses though. Yeah. Paritranaya sadunam vinaschaya chaduskritam dharma samstatpanataya sambhavami yuge yuge. So in every yuga. But that's not the Krishna in his original transcendental form. So the, the Lord comes in different times, in different forms. But Krishna himself, the original Krishna, Swayam Bhagavan, he will come only one time in the day of Brahma. And similarly, Lord Chaitanya will come only one time in the day of Brahma. Yes? Yes, Guru Maharaj. We are so fortunate uh, to have been born uh, in Liti just after uh, them. Yeah, just after Lord Chaitanya. We're very fortunate to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya who came to give Sankirtan, teach everyone to chant the holy name. Mm -hmm. But in every age there was chanting of the holy name. In every age, the chanting of the holy name was there. It's, it's not that the chanting of the holy name was only introduced in the Kali Yuga. But what happened was Lord Chaitanya brought it out from the temples. Previously, the chanting of the holy name was in the temple. But Lord Chaitanya brought the holy name outside and let everyone chant. Uh huh. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I can. Yeah, understand now. Okay. One more thing that like uh, Rama, Narasimha, and Krishna, they they are the uh, like Krishna is a uh, supreme god himself. Once I heard that these are the very important avatars because they come with all the opulences. Yes, that's what it says. There is one scripture in scriptural reference reference like that. 
Yes. So we see oh. worship of Lord Rama is very popular, and worship of Lord Nishingadev is also very popular. Okay. What I couldn't understand is, uh, like, for example, if we take Vamana Dev, he is also appears to have all the six appearances, Guru Maharaj. Can you give an example how to understand this? Like, uh, what appearance is, uh, like, uh, some example, what appearance is missing in other avatars or something like that? Yes, well, Lord Vamana Dev, he, you know, he appears in the heavenly planets, does it? Uh, as the son of Kashyapa and Aditi, and he comes to take away the opulence of Bali Maharaj and to give back the heavenly planets to the demigods. So, but Lord Vamanadev, he, he even he, he resides with Bali Maharaj in, in one of the lower subterranean heavenly planet, Sutapaloka. There's one planet there in the lower region of the universe where the demons reside. And Lord Vamanadeva is also there with them, taking care of Bali Maharaj. But Lord Vamanadeva is also, he is usually in the heavenly planet. You don't you don't find Lord Vamana Dev uh, here on this planet, but he's more in he's with the demigods. You know, he's the son of Kashyapa and Aditi, so he's one of the he's one of the Adityas, and he's there usually in the heavenly planets with Kashyapa and Aditi. So. You don't see the all the opulent all the knowledge. You don't see Lord Vamanadev speaking so much. He comes to take away to get charity. He comes to beg charity, so he doesn't display the opulence of knowledge. He doesn't display the opulence of renunciation. Beauty is there. Yes. Beauty is there. We see him performing wonderful pastimes, but we don't see him displaying great strength. He comes to beg. So he's not very famous. We don't see that uh, Lord Vamana Dev is famous. Like Krishna, Lord Krishna is very famous. You know, he speaks the Bhagavad Gita. And he has many devotees. But we don't see Lord Vamana Dev like that. You don't find many people worshipping Lord Vamana Dev. Right? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I can understand now. Yeah. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. So, Guru Maharaj, should we go for uh, chanting? Or? Yeah, we should, right. We should go for chanting. Where are my data? All right. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna.